third speaker is Dr. Pankaj Singhal, and I know Pankaj from way back then. Uh, he has a PhD in chemistry too from the University of California River, Riverside, and did postdoctoral work uh, at uh, Berkeley. And then got recruited in, two, in 1995 as a scientist, 99, at clinical microsensors. And- I uh, hired him, I can Here you go. <laughs> and uh, held the various managerial positions when clinical got acquired by Motorola Life Sciences and then became the CEO of the spin-out, which was Os Osmetech uh, Molecular Diagnostics. And he saw the evolution of Osmetech Molecular Diagnostics from a private company to a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ. So you can go to the web and, and they changed their name to, to Genmark, G-E-N-M-A-R-K and relocated to Carlsbad to be close to uh, what used to be in Vitrogen Life Sciences. Maybe they can be acquired, God knows. Um, so Ankash left in 2012 and uh, did an interesting stint at UCLA where he was the first executive director of the UCLA Innovation Center, which is part of the medical school, and helps those who are entrepreneurs or wanna be entrepreneurs figure out resources in terms of putting companies together business plans, and so on. And then joined Biometric and Carlos Bad in 2012. Uh, Biometric, and he will tell you a lot about it, is in as a platform technology for sample stabilization. So you can get rid of the cold chain management and freezing the sample, and that way you can speed up the process of developing diagnostic kits and, and cut the cost. And he serves as the senior VP for corporate uh, development at Biometric. That was a long introduction. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I actually followed Ahmed's um, advice, and I only have five slides, so hopefully I'll be very quick. And I thought we'll talk a little bit about maybe a different angle where diagnostics is. So, so far, I think we've heard about companion diagnostics, and sorry, my voice is breaking up. <coughs> companion diagnostics and some challenges with reimbursement. Really, uh, you know, one of the reasons uh, I left Genmark and then found uh, this company called Biomatrica and think it's an inter interesting play is uh, because there's a different kind of paradigm almost as we talk about the next generation of diagnostics. And uh, I won't go into very much detail, but I kind of titled my talk as 21st century. It's just my opinion. It's not where the industry is moving, but I think it's an interesting perspective. Um, if you think about it, there's a transformation that we all have seen, and I don't know if you can see it in the back, uh, but really the computer industry is an example. Right? We kind of started out with these clunky big vacuum tubes, some guy sitting on a bench and soldering things out, kind of moved that to semiconductors, big machines, really mass scale production of things. And then it went from that huge centralized environment to little phones that we all carry, little computers that got decentralized. So that's kind of the natural progression that that industry took. And really, three things that we see why that happened in a way. Of course, there were a lot more things to it. It was very hard to do. It was complex logistics more than anything else. Great technology already existed, but how do you get it to the masses? How do you make it, to Bob's point, easy enough, but then cheap enough? Uh, make it so it's globally deployable, it's miniaturized so people can actually hold it in their pockets? Things like that make a huge difference when an industry really migrates from being esoteric to mass deployable. So fast forward, why am I talking about computer industry? You go to our industry, talking about diagnostics, or really molecular biology, basically. Same kind of parallel if you think about it. You have some people, even today, lots of R&D happening in labs, but really those tests which were done as LDTs and big you know, institutions, Mayo Clinic and other places, starting to go into systems biology now where you're talking about people like Illumina and LifeTech putting out hundreds of sequencers, if you will, in parallel, and people are just cranking out genetic information in the diagnostic industry. And then after that, it's kind of the theme of the talk today, I think, personalized medicine. It's a big buzzword. We're nowhere close to it. Uh, we don't know how to do it, to be honest. We want people and personalized information, but even now we're talking about challenges where the drug company and the diagnostic company can't even get along. They don't know how to work with each other to really deliver targeted therapy at the point of need. 
And that's kind of where I think the same problem is happening, where they're figuring out how to make these logistics different. How to decentralize the diagnostic industry, how to miniaturize these tests so they become easy to do, cost effective to do, and of course, making them globally available. So it's not just about you have to go to a Mayo Clinic or you have to go to a first world country, but you can really globalize this thing. So with that kind of in mind, uh, if we go to the next slide, um, what's the difference, right? How do we move to this patient-centric care, if you will? In the 20th century, kind of on the left, you see there people sitting in doctor's offices and waiting and you know the doctor barely, barely comes and sees you for two seconds and disappears and you're waiting again for a lab test. Uh, ultimately, when you get tested, some person in the lab is doing some tests which you have no idea about. It's just old school thinking in a way. In the 21st century, we want to take our own sample. Right, to Bob's point, somebody can finger prick themselves, they can actually take a sample. The test, well, I'm logging onto my computer and having my coffee, well, maybe I can run the test as well. So ultimately, if we're going to move towards personalized healthcare, same kind of vision would have to play out in the healthcare industry in some ways. And molecular diagnostics can do that. The technology exists even today. We can get personalized information about ourselves, but we just can't get it at a scale that makes sense for it to be universal. Um, going to the next slide, you know, and this is kind of one aspect of it. I definitely don't claim this is the whole thing we need, but we need things which are simple. Sample to answer all the way. We need them to be easy to use. Somebody pricks themselves, puts it on a little device, and gets, I guess, no result. Integrated test reagents, global deployment, and of course, just yes, no easy results that anybody can do that. Um, click one more time. So the first three is something what Biometrica is involved in, and which is why I kind of made that uh, distinction that these three things are changing how the next generation of diagnostics is hopefully, at least according to us, we deploy. It will be easy to do, it'll have everything in there, and it can go anywhere. There's no limitations. Okay. And this is where Biometrica, just a little, I guess, point about what we do. We work basically with lots of different companies um, because of the platform technology, where we're looking at changing how molecular diagnostic tests are done, and next-gen sequencing is done, um, so that it becomes easy. It's very complicated still. And then there are certain innovations, even in this uh, area of protein-based diagnostics and cell-based diagnostics. I don't know if you guys know, but most of the cases, cells can't even be transported today from one site to another. How would we ever detect cells and detect what the genomic profile of the cells are if they can't even move around from point A to point B? So there are different areas that somebody, uh, technology like Biometrica plays in. If you uh, go to the next slide, um, why do we play in this? Uh, Biometrica basically has a unique chemical library of molecules, mostly small molecules. We've developed, the company's developed it over the last decade, where really we can stabilize pretty much anything, at least so far. We're still looking for our challenge. Um, but so far, going from uh, molecular analytes like DNA, RNA proteins, uh, all the way to cells and even live mammalian cells, uh, we're working on uh, stabilizing those. And really where we want to apply this uh, platform technology is in the area of diagnostics, which is something I'm familiar with. So I joined the company about three years back and kind of moving the technology in that direction and getting some very good traction there. Uh, the other part we are looking at is transporting of biologicals, just to get things out or transporting of therapeutics. Vaccines, for example. There are enough protein and RNA-based vaccines today, but they cannot reach the third world countries. They can't get there, only because there's no cold chain. It's the only reason people here can get a vaccine and the rest of the world cannot. And so if you can actually stabilize those vaccines or those therapeutics, that they can be mass deployed, we could change the world, just with that <coughs> So that's what we're involved in, this chemical library we use in different applications. Um, go to the next slide. Really patient-centric care. We think every patient would have their genomics, their proteomics, their metabolomics, and all of those omics, if you will. If you had them at your fingertip, you basically could do the personalized medicine care that you want to do because you could perform. That's the dream. And hopefully, part of the dream for us is getting those tests near the patients, making them simple, easy to do, 
miniaturizing them, making things ambient, logistics. I don't know if you guys know, but uh, um, in terms of dry ice shipments in this country, I think a life tech alone spends about all capacity of UPS and FedEx in San Diego. Um, there's a big fight going on between Illumina and LifeTech in San Diego right now about that. Um, so there are just simple things like that. These are not technological innovations, they're just logistics innovations which can change how we get access to all this technology and treatment. And uh, we basically work like the Intel Inside model or the Biomatrix Inside model for these companies. Thank, Thank you. you.